There are a lot of limitations in Game Builder Garage. Part of the fun of it all, to me at least, is finding creative solutions to get around them. I experienced that problem when I was trying to make a good stealth game. I thought I could get by on sensors, but they present a few problems that I didn't really know how to deal with. So I thought, how would I do this with code? Well, stealth games usually use a vision cone tied to an enemy, but also a ray or a line between the enemy and the player. If an unbroken line can go from the enemy's point of view to the player and you're within the cone, you're spotted. Well, Game Builder Garage doesn't have rays or lines that we can render. So what's one way to replicate them? Well, you can launch an object really fast from one point to another and collect information about that trajectory and treat it like a ray or a line. We're starting with the basic setup with a player character and an enemy. Right now, he only has a touch sensor that detects the person. So the first upgrade we're going to do is using a fancy object, in this case an apple, to detect the player character instead of a person. So we'll just create an invisible apple, attach it to the person, and make the touch sensor detect that apple. This way, other person nodons won't trigger the enemy. Next, we're going to make the origin point of the ray and have it point towards the player. We're going to use a Y hinge, a cylinder, and a teleport exit because we're going to be launching an object at the player very quickly to gather information about what's between the enemy and the player. To aim the cylinder properly, we're going to use two location sensors and do a little bit of math. You need two calculate nodons. We're going to be subtracting the X from the Z from the person to the enemy. Then we'll use a position to angle node on, an invert node on, and an addition calculator with a constant node on set to 90. When we plug that into the cylinder, it should be facing us all the time now, wherever we go, in relation to the enemy character. So now that that's set, our next objective is going to be to create the projectile that gets launched. Basically the point. We launch the point from the origin to the destination, in this case either nothing or the player character. So we'll create a teleport entrance to correspond to the exit that we made before. And we can use anything, but I decided to go with a pencil. I like the dimensions. Um, I went with a size 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.2. I want it to be narrow. And then we'll set up the teleport so that it works with the pencil and we'll add two sensors one for the world and one for the player we'll also add a teleport entrance to take this pencil back into this phantom zone when it hits something for the touch sensor that detects the world we want it to be very very narrow and we want it to check for anything that the world or walls would consist of for the player checking sensor, we want it to be wider and for it to check for the apple, since the apple is basically acting as our player detection object. We'll attach the world detecting sensor to the teleport so it takes the pencil back here as soon as it hits something. To check that the detection is working, we'll use an and node on so that when the player or person or apple is in the touch sensor and he gets detected by the projectile will play a sound. The slow motion won't really work because it'll only be doing it for a very short period of time. Sooner or later we'll have to deal with when the projectile hits nothing and goes off into space. So let's tackle that now. We can have a not node on that counts up a counter from 0 to 60. That would be one second. And when it reaches 60, we can activate the teleport and bring the pencil back here. The not node on guarantees that the counter is only counting up during a period of time where the pencil is not touching anything. You should probably shorten this to 30 to make it half a second, but I left it this way here and it still worked well. Teleports get tricky, so make sure that you always check that they work with the right object. Now we'll move this a little bit closer so we can watch what's happening in the game screen. We just need to fix that original teleport and now it's working. Q 
So that wraps up the solution. We have basically a kind of slow moving line renderer that you can use to get some information on what's in between two points. In this case, we use it for stealth so that if the enemy and the player are within a line's reach of each other with no obstacles, you can set off an output. But you can probably use this in a lot of different ways. Now, I've included a demo game that has the basics of the ray launching stealth mechanic, and I've commented it out so that it should be a little bit easier to follow.